All right, figured I'll do my response video to the uh, Zeitgeist movie, uh, you know, the part two, whatever it's called. Um, you know, why it's still fresh in my mind. Um, I watched a couple parts of it over again just to make sure of some things. Um, but anyway, I, yeah, the first criticism would be, yeah, two hours to say ten minutes worth of stuff. You know, a lot of PR, you know, a lot of playing the same game they complain about in the current system, the manipulation of the mindset, you know, the whole consumer culture that we have, and they sort of play the same game, um, you know, let's design it for the lowest common denominator, so let's take two hours to say something that should be sayable in ten minutes, um, and, you know, so right there's one criticism, you know, let's do it with slick images and let's waste lots of time with blinking eyes and other kinds of crap <laughs> to get, not get to the damn point. Um, so anyway, yeah, look, 80% of the movie, 85% is stuff, yeah, you know, it's come out of my own mouth, so great, um, you know, and, but it's that 15% again, it's like, um, doing the right thing for the wrong reason, and when you get that 15% wrong, I just think, as humans, we need to change for the right reasons, we need to change understanding who we are, and if we change with an expectation that we're something other than what we are, then the change isn't going to be the change isn't going to be sustainable or useful um, because our real self will be a, revealed and is, and break whatever you think you're going to accomplish because you're going to base it on some false notion of what it is to be human or an animal on planet Earth. Um, so anyway, we'll get to that point in the end. You know the overall philosophy of the documentary, I guess it is. All right, so it starts off with the simple thing you know, inflation um, money the monetary system and it's a it's a pretty good explanation I mean you know those just the little kind of statistics that do make you say whoa <laughs> you know um, like a dollar in 1913 is now worth twenty seven dollars okay so it takes twenty seven dollars to buy as much value as you could buy with a dollar in 1913 um, and that's real world um, by the how, how they <clears throat> explain the system, they sort of say money is debt, and that's okay. I mean, it sort of is, but uh, it's it's a representation, and I think what it represents is work. It buys labor. Um, it's generally dis distributed based on the production of something, the creation of something, and uh, you know, a human's time. Um, that's what creates the value. Uh, that the money is based on and uh, we know who's doing that the workers and uh, so they, they sort of like I said it's okay but they do the Ron Paul version they even have a little quote from Ron Paul in there and it's really not the point I mean it's not fractional reserve banking is not the problem having a monetary system that can adjust to the the world we live in is not the problem the problem is we've created mechanisms in that monetary system that break down the whole idea um, and what they didn't mention was, in my opinion, the key components, which are the inheritance that allows for the consolidation of wealth, uh, the free ride, um, and the other brokenness would be the bankruptcy, the idea that uh, certain risk-taking or irresponsible behavior gets erased, you know, that the, the negatives, the, the train wreck isn't, isn't the responsibility of the people who wrecked the train, instead it's the it's the responsibility of the passengers and whoever's ever housed the train plows into and that's the real problem with the capitalist system um, capitalism might not be all that evil um, if at least it didn't have those huge liabilities those huge inefficiencies those uh, completely illogical and erroneous contrivances that do nothing for any idea of a competitive system or a market system they just completely break the foundations that the whole thing is made out of it breaks the competition it turns it into an unfair competition um, because you create these these escape hatches um, and these free rides that uh, you know make the make, make it possible for people to run the train and jump off and that they shouldn't be allowed to do all right, so moving on, uh, the next segment they did was on basically the United States and its the capitalists and how they've fucked with the rest of the world, you know, from the Shah of Iran to most of the leadership in South America, um, you know, how they've assassinated people and killed people and destroyed people 
for the sake of gaining control over population so they could exploit them or their resources or their land uh, for their purposes and uh, so that part's good because you know it's piece of stuff some people need to see. I mean, the problem is that most capitalists just ignore it. You know, they don't they don't have any empathy for human beings. They don't care about human beings. Um, so it's perfectly okay with them if you fuck with other people, as long as you don't fuck with them. Um, and they think they're too smart to be fucked with. Maybe that's what they think. They're immune to such exploitation and abuse. So they'll not be moved by that segment. Um, but it is important, and, and then, you know, the focus really should be, it is the rich who are playing these games. It's rich, greedy monarchs is what they are. They're the controllers of the world, the super wealthy, and uh, they're making the rest of the, the, the poor are getting poorer. I mean, statistically, they sort of demonstrated that. And uh, the rich are getting richer, and they're doing it by gleaning the blood and guts out of the poor, sucking their blood. All right, then they did a little segment on terrorism. Uh, again, I don't think they, I think they missed some of that. I mean, it's a, yes, we're using terrorism as an excuse, but uh, there's a real politics behind the whole terrorism argument. Um, you know, it's not all about religion and all this other stuff. It's about politics. Uh, they didn't hit it very hard, so at least they avoided the 9-11 bullshit that they had in the other video, which ruined it, the, uh, the first documentary, uh, the truther bullshit. All right, then it was basically the idea was now moving into the philosophical part um, that it's it's uh, technology is the future. And they had a little bit in there about suppression of technology, but it was a very little bit. Um, I don't think there's been too much suppression of technology. Um, obviously, commerce demands new technology to be competitive with the existing technology, and people don't buy anything thinking 10 years in advance so much of what business did that appears like they were suppressing technology is basically just making a business decision that people aren't going to pay more for something that'll last 10 years they want disposable they want a disposable life they want a cheap life and uh, they're not going to invest in the future and that's a consumer problem not a business problem um okay so uh they, then they did they hit the general idea is they hit, you know, Adam Smith economics too hard, that selfishness isn't going to solve our problems, that's not the wave of the future, that's uh, not the way of the future. Um, all right, so then on the philosophical part, you know, they, they used words like, um, you know, they want to create a, a resource-centered economy, not a monetary system. So, you know, they want to kind of do away with money. And, you know, they have to do that in some better way. They have to do that in some way that's going to encourage people to be productive. But they sort of had a notion that people would be productive just because they want to be, because we give them an idea in their head that says, I want to be productive. And that's pretty hard to do. It's pretty hard to change the mindset of all the humans on Earth. Um, so I think it's a lot easier just to create a, a system that obliges people to be productive. Uh, and it doesn't have to be one based on exploitation and greed. You can still have money without exploitation and greed. Um, all right, so they use these two words, you know, this emergent crap and uh, um, symbiotic. And so the emergent thing just says, you know, okay, we're going to keep changing, we keep changing, we keep changing. But the truth is, no, we're not. Um, we're, re we're, we're moving pretty rapidly towards a pretty solid truths, pretty, pretty solid understanding of what we are and wh what we're made out of, where we came from. And uh, so the change isn't going to always be there. We're not going to find out some new thing that's going to allow us to do some new thing. Um, we're going to find out that we're just little hungry beasts and we just got to find efficient ways to put the food in our mouths. And that's what it's going to come down to. Um, so that part I think is just bullshit. Uh, we're not evolving per se much at all. Um, all right, so then on the symbiotic stuff, you know, it's, it's all this stuff like... Uh, you know how we're all intertwined with nature and uh, then they start using words like unconditional love uh, I mean that you know we're all everything and all this it's just it's just you know this new age mush talk that doesn't mean a damn thing um, you know some idea that it's our human nature isn't greedy and selfish 
And it is our nature. It's the nature of any conscious, sentient organism to be self-interested. And it's only through principles that he can overcome that at all. And it's always uncomfortable. It's not fun to be unselfish. Very downing a profit. You know, self-interest is not going to make the world a better place. Um, you know, they don't really focus on the rich. They just kind of focus on the monetary system. And, the, you know, the rich are the real the evil here. Um, so, you know, and then they went into alternative energies and they said a lot of things that were really overstated. Um, you know, how, how we're going to escape, we can escape oil and it's a guarantee and we can all have electric cars, but they don't explain how electric cars are not the fucking answer. That we have to have more, more efficient sources of electricity, cleaner sources of electricity. And those aren't right around the corner. Um, they're there, their technology's there, but it's, it's not going to, it's not going to give us the boom that oil did. And it's going to take money to build those things. Uh, they did mention the, the idea of a tube transport, which I thought was kind of funny because I mentioned that in one of my videos before I saw the movie and, um, so I didn't realize that, but um, yeah, I mean, we've got to invest in that somehow in the future. But right now, we've got to get rid of the broken system we have to be able to do any of this stuff, to move to any future. So anyway, all in all, good, but um, the philosophy behind it is too much like a religion. So they should have just left that fucking part out.